verse 27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So let me ask you, whose responsibility is it? What is pure religion? Orphans and widows, but to keep oneself. Again, whose responsibility is it to offer that sacrifice to the Lord? That is yours. I can't do it for you. But that is something that God says is very important. I have been shocked lately, as probably you have, to watch the world corruption, which is blatantly getting worse as I speak. But more than that, you know, the world... Uh, the unbelievers, I mean, you know, they're, they're unbelievers. Their worldview is different. But what really shocks me is the church's worldview changing. Where they're pushing abortion till fully termed babies. They are accepting and emphasizing supporting the LGBTQ agenda and sexual fluidity and other perverted things. The church. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 9 says, We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, slave traders, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me, of course, this is Paul writing this to Timothy, his son in the faith, Pastor Timothy. First Corinthians, again, Paul is writing to another church, Church of Corinth. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be, help me with that word, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, Pause there for a second. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers, nor uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, praise God. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Praise God. Paul, writing again, Romans chapter 1, verse 26. Those who rejected God. This whole discussion, he's talking about those who have rejected God. Because of this, the rejection of God, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men, received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Other versions say their perversion. That's what the Bible says. I am disappointed as I drive through the city and across the United States and I see rainbow flags out front of churches. We welcome anyone to the gospel. We love all people, correct? Yes. But when you start passing laws to force that agenda, which according to the word of God that we just read is perversion on a nation, in my opinion, I believe I have the word of God on that, this. This is hatred towards God. Yes. Hatred towards God. Amazingly, this decay or corruption is happening fairly quickly. Right now, 16% of people 18 to 23 years of age identify as LGBTQ. 16% of our population in that age bracket. According to the American Spectator magazine, I quote, never before has such a large proportion of an American generation intend to be possibly void of hex het heterosexual relationships and no generation has been so set on at least possibly foregoing biological children. Making this a change that could reorient the central social experience of family in the United States. You're getting the point, right? We're getting this down. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. 
You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. You say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both of them. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, friend. God needs you to carry his presence, his spirit in the earth realm. He needs you. He needs you to be willing to carry his spirit, to touch people, to be used in this earth realm. He needs your body. Your body was created for his spirit, just as your stomach has been created for food. You were created to carry his spirit and to live life through his spirit. You remember the first one of this series, we talked about the eight steps to disloyalty. Remember that? We went down through, it begins with an independent spirit, remember? Then people get offended, they become passive, they become critical, they become political. They are then deceived. We want to focus on deception a little bit here tonight. The only freedom from deception is truth. And I said this last week, people that are deceived do not know they're deceived. So our nation is being deceived. And you know, probably a large majority do not know they're being deceived. James chapter 1, verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at, at his face in a mirror after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed. The definition of deception or deceived is to believe what is false or invalid to be true, to be misled, or to be ensnared. I want to talk to you tonight about mind pollution. I want to talk to you tonight about what are you choosing? You know, we can talk about what you eat. You are what you eat, right? You are what you think. You are what you digest. You are what you put in your spirit. You are... Be coming what you feed on. It is not an accident, friend, that media, movies portray before you images of what we would say the Bible would not agree with, and the Bible would say is perversion. Yet, the whole media industry is like it's been put in place for a purpose to deceive. And people have these Dividing lines, you know, parental guidance, PG-13, R-rated, X-rated. Let me suggest this to you, that if you are feeding on corruption, you will become corrupted. This is not a petty or small plot. It is a plot against God. To weaken his people. Because when you become deceived, you do not recognize deception. We need, as any people, we need to be well aware of deception. But, you know, uh, people have this false assumption that they can play around with things and not fall in. Right? And if you have counseled as many people as we have that have been caught in addictions or habits that they do not, not like and is bringing destruction to their family and their personal lives. And if you trace it back, we always go back to when they found whatever it is, they got involved, and they never, not one of them planned to destroy their life at that point. I'm in control. I can stop anytime I want to. You know, friend, you're being deceived. This is a plot. But I showed you this last year. I want to show it to you again. A glass of water is refreshing when you're thirsty, but it doesn't take much to corrupt it. Just one drop. We'll just take one drop here, and that's all we'll do. I mean, one time, one drop, we'll just try it, right? Isn't that what they say? Just what can hurt, right? One time, just try it, right? And so as we're here thinking that everything's cool with our glass of water, as we look at it again, we notice it is changing. Now, before service is over, it'll be completely green. There will not be any white clear in there. It'll be completely green. 
And that was not the intent of one drop. I mean, one drop compared to the entire glass. I mean, come on, that can't change everything, right? It can. It can. The problem is people aren't recognizing the one drop. They're, they've been lied to, and they don't recognize that it, they're drinking poison or they're feeding on something that's corrupted, rotten. It's going to bring pain and bitterness to their soul. It's an attack that's underground. It's planned, and it's after your life. And if you're not aware of it, you can be surprised by it. Have you ever washed clothes and put whites in with colors by mistake? Yeah. What happens to the white? Yeah, your sheets all became orange or red or whatever, right? Your pillowcases, right? If you live in a place with hard water, if you ever had, some of you live out in the country, have hard water, and if your softener stops working or something, it, it can turn your clothes orange, right? And if you do it several times, it'll get darker and darker, and you may just accept it like, you know, it's a t-shirt, you know. But the point is, What's your, what's your worldview? White or white? Now, how are you going to know this isn't white? How are you going to know that you're off track? How are you going to know you've been deceived? How are you going to know that your life is living as God said? How are you going to know if you have become off in your ideas? You have to have an absolute. You have to be able to compare your thoughts to your life. You'll not be able to recognize what you have to discard unless you can see the difference. You won't see the difference until you put the white against the real white against the perverted white. Right? Well, Pastor, is there such a thing as that? Yes, there is. Romans chapter 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing, you could say washing, changing, examining, renewing your mind. Then you'll be able to do what? Test. Is that white or is it not white? I better test that. Nope, I'm buying new detergent. Didn't work, right? Yeah. Then you'll be able to test and then approve or disapprove what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. 